peace and courage, patrons, friends, whoever catches this video. I keep sourcing, and I've said this in a few other videos, but I keep sourcing the poem that just came spilling out of me at the beginning of this year, titled Honor Thy Ache. Honoring Thy Ache. And as I think of the nature of so much of my creative work, uh, with work, life, living, imperfect, fumbling, with intrinsic paths, the nature of intrinsic paths, the nature of intrinsic, inherent, what's actually going on inside of us, inside of you, inside of me, and how we honor it, how we listen to it, how we risk for it, how we source it, how we tend to it. And so just in modeling some of that with you and in inviting you in, um, it's just feeling stronger in me through video, through some sort of outside of typing and, and, and graphics even, and excuse me, there is um, there is such there is such a gap, there's such a field in between all the lines, in between all the doings, in between the defaults. For how we move into creativity and risk and humility and fire, even fire, fire and healing and self-compassion and really, really, really deep love. And so I come to you with these aches with so much humility and so much imperfection and constantly fucking it up. Constantly fucking it up. As many of you know, a lot of, a lot of my work in life and movement is in this weaving of human dignity and weaving of human life and weaving of injustice, specifically systems that are unjust, institutional things, institutional realities, history, and specific to the aches of this time right now in my body, the specifics of race, of racism, of a history specifically me in the U.S., growing up in the U.S., with a history where black community in particular being separate from, separated in land ownership, in, in redlining, in education, in access to wealth and land ownership, in access to to this idea, this capitalistic idea of upward mobility, this, this, this complicated and, and, and deep, deep down, beloveds, inhuman way <laughs> of relating to each other and relating to the world and to the planet and to our, and to our own actual deep selves. And so lifting the names that many of you have heard in the media, have heard around, but as the specifics of Breonna Taylor, the, spe the specifics of Ahmaud Arbery, the specifics of George Floyd, the specifics of black individuals, black families, black children, black communities that continue to be just surrounded and bombarded by oppressive, top-down, oppressive forces that benefit from separating humanity. And I, sp I speak this to you not, not, from just, not from just academic thinking and researching and having a conceptual and intellectual relationship to this. I speak to you from walking with, breaking bread with, being in wholehearted relationship with people in the black community in my life, 
and, and also speaking in my limited way, which is not at all to say it even remotely relates, but to the branch out the side in my own being, being an LGBTQIA plus individual, being someone who's extremely sensitive, someone who's artistic, someone who has been raised in this white male body and all the complexity of like trying to or, or being pressured to or, or whatever is within me that I don't even fully understand related to a history of colonization where there's a coming into a culture, extracting it, coming into the planet and extracting it for one's own gain, for one's own sense of control, for one's own sense of power. And I just, there's so much, again, rooting back into the beginning of this video, the intrinsic pathway, this inherent aching, that this isn't just about memorizing terms and, 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 and saying the right things. Or do, it's like, this is, to me, the, the creative path forward into this creative way of opening these things up is actually busting through what keeps us from feeling what's real, honoring what's really going on, facing pain, facing history, facing ancestral stuff, facing things inside of our beings. And, and I want to specifically just invite anyone who's watching who is white, identifies as white, or has some relationship to that nature in a physical I've been brought into this world of the, in this sort of way, specifically in the U.S., but all over, that there is, that we, that us, that I, that you, all of us, but specifically to, to that demographic, that there is so much aching inside of us and around us that wants us, begs for us, demands for us to wake up. To wake up to show up, to grow up in the realm of the heart, in the realm of the gut, in the realm of whatever is being avoided and numbed and, and, and tr you know, within these realms of like trying to keep it all together, trying to, trying to be this perfect person, trying to like all these things that just, that, that don't allow for vulnerability, that don't allow for, falling apart, that don't allow for breaking open and, and breaking free in these ways. I keep going back, I keep referencing Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman's words, The Sound of the Genuine. If you haven't read that, I've linked it in the Patreon post. I'll link it wherever I share this video, but just this commencement speech around the, this deep invitation of what the sound of the genuine in me, the work that it takes to get to what is genuine in each of us, unique to each of us as a pathway where justice, human dignity, planet care, soul care becomes unquestionable. It's not just a, oh, I'm gonna check this box or I'm gonna jump in a little bit when, but it's this, it's this ongoing journey that is integrating into every aspect of our lives. So it, it, it touches how we, how we vote, it touches how we, how we move through systems, it touches what, or what we think of and how we relate to, to money and to other forms of currency, it touches how we relate to land, it touches how we relate to food, it touches how we treat each other, how we see each other, how we listen to each other. And if we're not doing that work, then it is so easy it is, it is subconscious, it is deep, it is complex for all the strings. This is, again, these are Howard Thurman's words. For the strings, of, the strings that other people pull to dictate, to define, and to, to, to continue destruction. And so my belief system is so rooted in believing that people are inherently divine. So I believe that each of us have this inherent divine nature 
that is beautiful, worthy of love. And so that pathway into that place, into that deep and trembling place, knowing that each of us, the fragility, the complexity, the humility along that journey is not easy. It's not simple. It's not meant to be. It's not meant to be simple. It's not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be transactional. It's not meant to be, if I just do this, then this is what I'll get. If, that, if I just, then I've got all the right thing. It is, it's a fumbling. It's on our knees. It's humility. It's just letting go. And so I just invite, I invite you, I invite more of me to be of a way, to, to, to be with our, with our brains, hearts, tongues, spirit, choices, movement. To be of a way. Who must I be? Not just what must I do. What, what must I give to? What must I organize around? Like all those things play into this, but like who must I be so this isn't just a one-off thing, a when it's convenient thing, a reactive thing but it is a way of being that actually must cost us. Cost us all these artificial comforts, all these artificial stories of these, these systems that, that, that were just, that, that have been literally infused and moved and, and in a way just that have violated so much of this inherent wisdom, this intrinsic wisdom, this wisdom from, from the way that the seed moves and grows through the soil and reaches out to the air, the way the water and the stream flows, the way the sky evolves and changes, the way so many groups of birds adapt and depend on each other, the way all these different things in nature emerge and survive, like this is a time alongside COVID-19, alongside consumerism, alongside mass media technology, alongside the work of anti-racism, alongside class, alongside LGBTQIA plus reality, alongside anything that is trying to control or trying to liberate, that we are just this inner work, that my humanity and your humanity in these deep threads, I believe, are aligned. But for us to get there, we have to unpack and we have to name what's real. We have to stare, face, grovel with history. We have to we have, we have to go into the pain and into the fire. And so it's why I care so much about practices related to walking and movement, whether it's by foot or by wheelchair, like the movement outside of walls that want to separate and isolate. It's why I care so much about meditative, contemplative practice, that the inner stuff that gets suppressed and stored and everything on the outside that's pushing down the oppressive systems, the, the, the idea that human worthiness is based off of how much money we, we make and how much we produce and how much we keep it together, that literally practices that help move us deeper so that, so that themes of justice, themes of, of human healing, themes of, of inner freedom, themes of protecting the natural world, themes of of caring for one another before all else, the themes of not taking advantage, themes of not extracting, are just become, it's an unquestionable sourcing and not just this, well, let me sit back and, and consider these things because I'm not sure I wanna get uncomfortable. I'm not sure I wanna open all the way up. I'm not sure I wanna really face what trembles. People are dying, the earth is dying because, in my belief, 
there's so much avoiding of what trembles. There's so much avoiding and numbing and spacing and separating and not facing the aches, the things that are really going on in you, the things that really go on in me. And so I just, I invite you into my aches around these things. With, with my drawing, with my creating, it is imperfect. I'm stirring all the time. It's far from easy. And there's a stream, there's a, there's a stream, there's a proximity that I fight for to stay close to these aches so that it's unquestionable to be of a way. Who must I be? Who must you be? Who must we be in all areas of our life? Not just compartmentalized. Risking, risking these default systems, risking relationships, risking these things that hurt so many people when we don't go into what's raw and what's real. And so I just, with humility and imperfection, I come to you, I invite you. If you want, if you have, if you, if, if, if there's question, if you're triggered by, just reach out to me. Feel what you're feeling. Feel with me. That's the jerk. That's the journey. That's the work. Is that with humility in one hand, because we recognize that it's not about just me being right and you being right and you being binary empire defeating empire constantly that it's literally how can we let go and then how do we allow what's raw and real to surface so that the unquestionable nature of i don't know i don't know all the different answers i don't know the linear way through here but what i do know is your dignity is unquestionable that the, that the care and, a, and attention to the planet is unquestionable. And that my own song of truth, of pain, of dreaming is unquestionable. And from there we create forward. So I'm gonna leave us, just, I just, I just wanted to invite you in. I want to invite you in. I posted some links below if specific to ending anti-black racism related to some of the communities I'm a part of. And I want to be with you in this journey, honoring and believing the best in each other and moving into discomfort with courage with self-compassion and with hearts that have, and these are bringing in some of James Baldwin's words from the fire next time, having the spines to envision a more human way. Blessings and healing and courage. Take a deep breath together. That we breathe in humility. And we breathe out courage. That we breathe in humility. And we breathe out courage. Thank you for listening. I'm eager to hear where and how this meets you as we imagine a way of being that is more loving in this time.